All right, so I'm going to be talking about packaging Tomcat for Linux distributions. Um, most of this is going to focus on uh, RPMs, probably because I'm a co-maintainer for Fedora. Um, but in light of the last talk, talking about the Windows distribution, um, I'm going to also mention uh, one of the Red Hat products, the JBoss web server. Um, we ship RPMs for Tomcat for that and Windows and Solaris. Um, so you can talk about that because it's packaged a little differently than the Fedora ones. All right. I uh, effectively just said all this stuff. Um, I'm going to briefly go over the Apache Tomcat distribution, um, sort of making the assumption that everybody knows how that's laid out and how that works. Um, so I'm just going to like mention what happens there just so I can draw correlations between the two. Um, I'm also going to briefly mention snaps uh, because someone on Freenode talked to me about it and I thought it was sort of interesting. So I'm going to try and see if anybody's using that. <laughs> All right, quick about me. I work at Red Hat, obviously. Uh, I supported Tomcat, HTTPD, and JBoss uh, EAP, which is the enterprise application platform. Uh, mostly JBoss Web, which is a fork from Tomcat from forever ago. Um, supported that for about three years. Um, I've moved around inside of Red Hat, so I work in the business intelligence group as a business intelligence engineer doing ETL and data warehousing. Um, so that was like radically different than what I was doing before. Didn't like that, so I moved back. <laughs> and uh, now I'm in uh, engineering, and I'm a committer for Tomcat, and also co-maintainer for the Fedora uh, Tomcat package. I maintain the real Tomcat package, and also work on the JBoss web server uh, Tomcat packaging. So they're all slightly different. Um, been using open source since uh, right after college, which sort of dates me a little bit. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm a recent uh, committer of Tomcat, just got uh, commit rights last year. Um, oh, I'll put an interesting fact about me, uh, something that most people find interesting is that I'm Native American. Um, a lot of people, I guess not here so much because it's more uh, international audience, uh, but at home around Raleigh and stuff, I always get weird questions about my ethnicity. Um, I don't really understand why, but so. Yeah. Oh, and I also apparently have a strong southern accent. Lucas isn't here to heckle me, so that's nice. Uh, <laughs> so if I start talking faster, it tends to come out more, so I'll try and slow down. Yes. That's the goal. Okay, so um, Hookson yesterday was talking about um, building Tomcat with Maven. Um, we had a need to do that. Um, so one of our build systems uses um, Maven, and we needed to build Tomcat with Maven uh, recently. So I wrote this wrapper, um, which basically has a bunch of different um, submodules that are all named really funny. It's a whole bunch of directories, and they all just have POM files on them. Um, but so it uses the Ant Run plugin. Yeah, so this is just a wrapper of uh, the ant build XML. Um, that sort of decoupled me from having to maintain my own like stuff with Maven. Uh, so now if any of the targets change, I can just change it right there. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see that. So yeah, um, I build the, the package sources, the embedded jars, um, compile the web apps, all that stuff. Um, and then some of the other um, some of these guys, the assemblies, uh, package stuff differently. Um, we don't ship the examples in uh, the JWS distribution. Um, so we strip those out and package them separately um, in a zip. And we use that zip for QA testing, or QA uses the zip for testing and stuff. So if anybody wants to talk about how it did that, um, we can do that after the fact. But I thought it was sort of a novel thing. Okay, why use distributions? Um, I'll break this down to a list of pros and cons, <laughs> and I tried to anticipate the questions that were going to be asked. Um, using Tomcat in a distribution isn't a popular uh, method, I guess, for most ASF members. Um, everybody tries to drive customers to using the ASF distribution, or at least uh, reproducing problems on the ASF distribution, which basically removes all the potential for problems inside the Linux distribution or whatever. Um, so here are some pros. Um, 
packaging Tomcat or using Tomcat from a distribution uh, makes it easy to install uh, and maintain. Um, you can install the package just like you would like anything else instead of having to go to the internet and download it. Um, the distribution tests Tomcat with all the libraries, all the other libraries that the distribution provides. Um, so like Log4j, for example, is one you can easily just point to the Log4j jar that uh, Fedora provides and use that. Um, system stability, uh, this one's sort of interesting. Uh, this, is, this mostly applies to RHEL. For Fedora and for JWS, um, we, or I, upgrade uh, to whatever the latest revision is. So um, from recently I upgraded from 7.075 to 77 on the extras library for RHEL 6. Um, I generally do that just because it's easier for me. Um, but RHEL, for example, RHEL Enterprise Linux <coughs> only backports <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, only backports specific bug fixes that customers request or security fixes um, that meet the criteria for being fixed. Um, and I say that because RHEL 6 is older, um, so only critical and important CVEs get addressed there. But RHEL 7, we fix everything. Um, and then one that I thought of this morning was uh, support for EOL versions. So Tom's, uh, Tomcat 6 is EOL upstream. Um, but it's included in RHEL 6, so we have to continue to provide support for that, however painful it may be, <laughs> until RHEL 6 goes into life. Sure. To sort of dance around it here without saying it explicitly, but it also allows the consumer, the person who's actually using the package manager, to uh, <clears throat> potentially outsource the monitoring of the announcements and hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about that um, in the Fedora section um, in a second. <clears throat> All right, cons. I'm sure you guys have a million more. Um, but so uh, one thing that I forgot to mention before is that I'm not a Tomcat user. I don't have uh, I don't have any systems that are running Tomcat presently. Um, I only work on Tomcat and packaging Tomcat. So. Uh, a lot of the use cases that I know of um, and that I care about are ones that our customers use and, and they care about and also the community. Um, so I may be a little more detached than I want to be from, you know, use cases and such. Uh, so I just want to throw that out there. All right, so obviously whenever you add another layer uh, between Tomcat and the end user, there are potential to have bugs there. Um, there are actually quite a few of those in Fedora until recently. Um, but I think most of them are addressed now. Um, it's difficult for developers to use if your developers don't know how to use the operating system and don't have any administrative uh, skills, then they won't know how to install, start, stop, uh, check logging, all that sort of stuff. So that requires um, specific skills for the distribution. And uh, one that I thought of yesterday was if there are configuration changes between revisions, then um, those don't get included in the update because uh, we mark configuration files so they don't get overwritten whenever you do a YUM update. Uh, so if there are any changes between the two versions, um, additions or removals of attributes or whatever, those don't get included, so you'd have to manually do that. Um, I try and protect against that as much as I can, but if something was removed, I can't remove it for you. <laughs> Not without clobbering your whole fig. Okay, so SID so distribution overview. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it happened last year and it's quite nasty, mm. which was a bug, a security fix got backported, which was fine. Mm. But there was, mean, before, before that was fixed, there was some caps of other fix, fixes had been made. Yep. And the result of backporting that particular security fix without supporting up effectively unrelated fixes actually ended up a really nasty denial of service bug. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely uh, noteworthy. Um, and the Tomcat community does a really good job of uh, linking commits together by revision, saying, like, this is a follow-up for that, this is a fix for that. 
Um, so it makes it sort of easy to kind of backtrack. I always do that whenever I, um, whenever I grab a fix, I always check and make sure that that revision is not listed anywhere else or if that VZ number is not anywhere else or whatever. Um, but yeah, that can happen too. Okay, so all the distributions that repackage Tomcat go through these four basic steps. Um, they download the sources, and build Tomcat and any extras that you need. Um, we don't distribute the uh, Catalina WS jar, so we don't uh, provide the web, so web services uh, implementation stuff, so we don't build that. Um, and then they add any OS specific stuff like service scripts for RHEL, uh, their system D for Ubuntu, their system D scripts. And for RHEL also, there's a couple of configuration files that give you um, the equivalent feature set that you would get by using setM. And I'll talk about that some more in a minute too. And then they distribute the package uh, with our package manager, for example, Yum. All right, so I said this is gonna be brief. Uh, <laughs> Apache Tomcat distributes a self-contained archive. Um, and then there are individual archives that you can also add later. Um, so the API documentation, the embedded Tomcat jars, and the logging adapters for log4j 1.x, um, they're built and provided in separate uh, zips that you can get. All right, so now I'm gonna talk about my favorite. Uh, so Fedora packaging. Uh, I'm just gonna sort of breeze through this stuff. Doing pretty good on time, so. Um, this is what I'm gonna talk about. So, uh, I don't know, uh, I didn't really, I guess I maybe made some assumptions about uh, you guys' level of knowledge on um, packaging or using a Linux distributions package, but so the RPM format is what Red Hat flavors of Linux use, uh, Fedora, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, and there may be some other spins I don't know about or work with uh, regularly. Um, everything you need to know about an RPM is defined in the spec file. Um, and the spec file is used to build the RPM package or packages. Uh, in the case of Tomcat, <laughs> it has a parent package, uh, and then there are a whole bunch of sub packages underneath that I'll talk about in a second too. Um, I have a link to the spec for Tomcat, but it's like super complex. Uh, I'm also a code maintainer for Tomcat native, and its spec file is much simpler. Um, so this is what a spec file would look like. So you have, uh, these things are required to build a package, so you have Java to build, APR, OpenSSL, et cetera. Uh, you get a description that you can see uh, if you run like YUM info or RPM info. Um, and then you go through the steps of building. So there's a preparation step, build, install, clean, and then uh, you can define things ha to happen uh, post-install or post-uninstall or pre-uninstall and so on and so forth. Um, and then basically it just, uh, here, it puts the files where they need to go. So, libdir, which uh, is a macro for uh, user share, Tomcat, I think, in this case. And then it drops the shared object there. Um, one of the things that uh, is done in the Tomcat package is that we uh, sort of amend the library path so that it knows where to find um, Tomcat native. So, you can do yum install Tomcat, Start it up, everything's fine. Uh, if you want to use Tomcat native, you just do yum install Tomcat native, restart Tomcat, and then it picks up the APR libraries. Um, like I said, the Tomcat spec, you can look at it real quick, but um, it's huge in comparison and does lots of scary stuff and has lots of bugs probably somewhere. But yeah, so we have lots of sources. Um, these things are specific to uh, Fedora, got a JSVC service. Um, these three are uh, wrapper scripts that do the initialization and start the daemon. Um, then you have a name service for multiple instances. Uh, a couple patches. Uh, we build with uh, Java 8, so remove the compiler options for V9. So. Of course, the, the method OSGI is some of the flows. Are you generating OSGI component under that OSGI? Uh, yes. I think so. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bring it on. Oh, okay. Well, I don't personally know how, but 
these existed before. <laughs> uh, but yeah, cool. Um, so then you have all of your build requirements and um, these are required for build time. And then these things are required whenever you install um, and it recommends installing Tomcat native. It doesn't actually do anything, I don't think. I mean, it may tell you that you can use Tomcat native with this somewhere, but I've never seen that. Somebody have a question? Nope. Okay. Um, so yeah, this thing is super long, does all sorts of stuff, builds Maven things for whatever reason. Okay, so back to this. All right, so packaging breakdown. Um, these, uh, this list here is the Tomcat parent package and then all these are sub packages, um, which basically means that um, we don't include all the libraries in the Tomcat package. They're all in lib. Um, we break up the web apps so that you can install a doc web app separately, um, the Java doc on the system. Uh, you can install JSVC support separately. This is the root and examples web apps. Um, this really only applies to Fedora um, and maybe Ubuntu, but we don't install the uh, examples web apps on the, the JBoss web server distribution and then the admin web app. Um, so you notice that there is a Tomcat lib which has all the libraries almost all the libraries. Um, and then there's JSP, EL, and serverless uh, API. They're all in their own individual packages. And I'll talk about why that is in a second. Okay, so directory layout. Um, this is sort of where all the things go. Um, it's different than the ASF distribution because we sort of put things in weird places. Well, weird. Uh, so the weird places are defined by the file system hierarchy standard. Um, so examples of things like that would be executables go in user bin, uh, global configuration files in Etsy, um, log files would be in var log, like these. Um, so user share Tomcat is the Catalina home uh, for the Tomcat installation. And then these are a bunch of sim links that point to the various places. <coughs> So if you really wanted to, you could just uh, refer everything to user share Tomcat and the sim links will take care of everything else. Okay, so back to the API uh, sub packages. Uh, I'm not even sure this is really still used, um, but uh, update alternatives on uh, Red Hat Linux updates uh, links to things on the system. So for this example, I picked servlet. Um, so if you, refer to uh, Etsy alternative servlet. It points you to the Tomcat jar, <clears throat> which is right there. Um, so you can install the servlet API without having to install the Tomcat RPMs in case you wanted to, I don't know, build a servlet or something like that. Um, so that sort of frees you from having to install the entire Tomcat distribution or any of the other Tomcat libraries, you can just install a servlet API, the EL, or JSP API, RPMs. It's a lot of letters. <clears throat> right. So to install and configure Tomcat, um, you use the package manager. Um, for Red Hat Flavors of Linux, it's yum. You can do yum install Tomcat. <clears throat> this will give you a working uh, minimal Tomcat installation. It includes Tomcat, configuration files that it needs to run, uh, the libraries that it needs to run, um, but it doesn't include any of the web apps. And I think that's it. I think it just excludes the web apps, um, which you can install separately. Uh, for example, I picked the Tomcat admin web app. So if you wanted to install the um, manager and host manager apps, you would just do a yum install Tomcat admin web apps, restart your Tomcat instance, and there you go. Um, configuring Tomcat is, like I mentioned before, um, the Red Hat flavors introduced two configuration files. So you have uh, Etsy system config Tomcat and Etsy Tomcat, Tomcat.com. Um, these two things give you the same capabilities that you have with setenv, um, the shell script that you would like to find some stuff in. Um, for example, you can enable the security manager by putting it in either one of those. So there are two because um, if you wanted to have multiple installations of Tomcat, um, you can copy some things around um, and you can copy the service script and you can still use the operating systems facilities to start, stop, and configure that. Um, I always get these confused. Did I write it down? 
Yeah, so Etsy sysconfig Tomcat overrides uh, any of the um, properties you define in Tomcat conf. So um, that is because when you make a copy of the service script, um, you get your own copy of the sysconfig uh, configuration file, but the tomcat.conf is global. So all the services use Tomcat conf, and then they all have their own individual sysconfig files that will override any of the properties you put in the Tomcat conf. Okay, starting a stop on the service is pretty easy. Uh, I've got examples on the next slide. Um, yeah, so there's a start, stop, and status commands for system CTL. Um, this looks kind of wonky, but this is from Fedora 25. <clears throat> so in previous versions, um, whenever you start or stop Tomcat using the system V scripts, um, it dumps all the standard out, standard error, and the Catalina.out. Um, in Fedora, like 20 and later, uh, we moved from SysV to SystemD, um, which sort of changed the way things are logged. Uh, standard out, standard error, and a SystemD unit uh, goes to the journal, to the systems journal. Um, so that's why you see the stopping logging in here uh, whenever I check the status of it. So it prints a SystemD prints a starting and stopping message and stopped message, and then any messages in between that it gets from standard out, standard error, it dumps to the journal. Um, that allows system administrators, uh, go ahead. I, I was gonna ask, um, you had a separate log directory when you showed the directory layout for the bottom of mm -hmm. Tomcat. Um, is there any reason why, I assume that's from log4j, um, is there any reason why the log4j config is spread into the directory rather than just the console offender and then letting Yeah, so this is, um, this is the, it just uses Julie by default, the Tomcat Julie logging. Um, so we don't change any of the way that it logs. Um, but instead of, in the sysv or init scripts, uh, the standard out and standard error is routed to Catalina.out. We just don't route it in the uh, systemd wrappers. So it just goes to the journal. Um, that lets your administrators like pretty easily check what's going on with their service status if they wanted to, instead of having to check Catalina out. Right, right, but there's normal uh, scripts capturing the mm -hmm. standard error, standard out. But what I was wondering about was the, the regular logging, the log4j uh, uh, file offender, I guess, is the default, mm -hmm. um, rather than the console offender. Yeah. Oh, well, it still logs to the catalina.date.log file inside of var log. Uh, just anything that would be standard out, standard error goes to the journal versus catalina out. So if you run a uh, vanilla Tomcat distribution now, you start it up, you get Catalina out and uh, Catalina.date.log. Uh, instead of getting Catalina out and the other log in this, all the out, output logging goes to the journal, but then you still have your standard logging in the log file. Does that answer your question? Uh, I guess I'm asking <laughs> why the standard logging wasn't also going to the journal. Like, oh. Because uh, standard logging includes a whole lot of stuff, like you can configure your access log and application log and all that stuff. You're still going to use that directory Yeah. Um, the fact that you're, th this is really only for the service logging. You can also configure, uh, you can configure the application to log to the journal, but uh, that would be, to me, that would be surprising to get it out of the box. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't expect, um, you know, ugh, in this case, whenever you're uh, troubleshooting a problem, um, I think it's easier for you to see, like, whatever snippets of, because, the thing that you've initiated in the journal versus looking at a log file for it. Uh, but if somebody thinks that's a change, <laughs> I'm open to uh, fixing or correcting that. Okay, so spend a bunch of time on that. Um, for updating, uh, you can just use the package manager again, yum update, uh, which uh, basically what that does is it removes all of the all the files that Tomcat installed previously, um, except for your configuration files, or files that are marked as configuration files in the spec, um, and it installs all the new jars. So you remove all the old stuff, and then you get the new stuff in an update. Um, like I mentioned before, is one of the cons. If there are any configuration changes, it's up to the user to like make those, because um, I don't want to clobber whatever configuration you have in your server XML whenever you do an update. 
so it, I just don't touch that. Um, and then removal is pretty self-explanatory. You're familiar with uh, RPM Comp? Uh, RPM yes. Comp is a command line utility that helps you resolve uh, conflicts between oh, yeah, yeah. local configuration changes and packages and updates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose I could do that. Okay, so for uh, contributing, um, there's not really a whole lot going on as far as bugs go. <clears throat> but, I mean, if you guys have any, feel free to jump on there, log one. If you want to fix it, jump on there and fix it. Um, the Fedora infrastructure, in my opinion, is a lot easier to understand than the uh, Ubuntu one. Uh, if you were to look at the package overview here, um, so basically everything that you need to know about the package and what's going on with the package you can find on this page. Um, these are all the different distributions that we are, are currently supported. Um, apparently I have a version in test. Um, and then for updates, did I not click it? Stop spinning. Okay, anyway, apparently that's not gonna work. Um, but for updates, I have to submit an, a new update for each one, for each of the uh, operating systems. So I have to submit an update for master, uh, well, not master, uh, Fedora 25, 24, 23, any of the versions that are supported now, I have to submit individual updates for those. So if you're ever curious um, what the status of an upcoming Tomcat update is, you can go to the update system and check it and see where it is. Um, if you have a Fedora account, you can also give me Karma. Uh, if you get plus three uh, Karma, then I can push the stable sooner than the mandatory like week or two week waiting period, depending on which distribution it is. Uh, for the extra packages in RHEL, <laughs> it's 14 days. So whenever I update, it has to sit in the testing repository for 14 days unless somebody gives a plus three Karma, and then I can promote it to stable. Um, you also still have access to the testing repositories if you guys wanted to. You could just enable that on your system and install the test packages, but um, those aren't actually past QA yet, so <laughs> if you wanted to test them, you can do that. Okay, on to something I know slightly less about. Um, Ubuntu distribution. Um, I'm going to draw some comparisons to Fedora. Uh, majority of this stuff is going to be the same. Um, except they don't include the alternative stuff, I don't think. Oh, and one thing I forgot, I didn't mention on the con, or on the pros of using a distribution that I intentionally meant to do. Um, SE Linux, I don't know if you guys ever used SE Linux before, um, but if you install the uh, distribution package of Tomcat, you get the protection that SE Linux offers through the uh, SE Linux policy for Tomcat. So. Your Tomcat instance can only bind to specific ports, it can only write to specific files, so on and so forth. Um, that is, as far as I know, also available in Debian. Um, I think by default, Debian uh, or Ubuntu installs uh, AppArmor instead of SE Linux, but you can switch it if you want. And I don't know if there's an AppArmor policy for Tomcat. I'll have to check on that. Okay, so. Um, as you can see here, uh, app get or at is similar to yum's package manager. Um, in this case, I grabbed the package so I could inspect it. Um, it is pretty much the same thing, <laughs> just in a different format. Um, so these are all of the packages that uh, are available for Tomcat 8. Uh, Ubuntu offers um, on on Fedora, there's only one Tomcat package and then it gets updated as we go along. So at some point, it changed from Tomcat 7 to Tomcat 8. Um, on Ubuntu, there's a Tomcat 7 uh, track and then there's Tomcat 8. And I think they included 8.5. Well, I know they included 8.5 somewhere uh, because it broke the free IPA server, but I don't know exactly where that was. Um, so this is similar to um, what we had in the Fedora distribution. So you got the uh, admin package here if you want to install the administrative web apps, uh, docs, examples. And then this thing is, um, if you wanted to run multiple installations, um, it gives you some sort of facility to do that if you install the user package. Okay, so uh, Ubuntu also follows the file system hierarchy standard. Um, <laughs> the Catalina home is bar lib Tomcat 8. 
Um, and for some reason, they use relative paths for their symlinks instead of linking to like var log and var cache. I'm not really sure why that was done, um, but okay. All right, so they compared to Fedora. Like I said, they're virtually the same. They both follow FHS and they both offer package managers that you can use to install, update, or remove uh, Tomcat. This is how you install. If you guys are getting tired of seeing the same stuff, I can breeze through this. Um, uh, so one note about the difference between uh, Ubuntu, at least Ubuntu 16 and Fedora 25 is that um, Ubuntu hasn't moved from SysV to SystemD. Um, they offer a SystemD service, but it just wraps the SysV stuff uh, for backwards compatibility. So if you notice, the status command here is a lot less verbose than the status command on the Fedora distribution was, because everything is going to Catalina out instead of going to the journal. Update and remove, same as Fedora. Uh, so a quick note about uh, contributing. I was hoping that Emmanuel was going to come because he is the maintainer um, and recently new Tomcat committer also. Um, I'm not a maintainer and I'm not really involved with the community very much other than talking to him sometimes. Um, so if you wanted to contribute there, this is sort of what their infrastructure page looks like. <laughs> and maybe you'll see why it's confusing. Oh yeah, okay. So. Uh, compared to the like Fedora package overview, it's very uh, plain, I guess. Um, I had a really hard time trying to find where the sources for the package was. Um, so that's sort of, I can only really find the summary of the stuff. Okay. Not bashing them or anything, it's just different. All right, so snaps. Um, I said a brief overview and then I wrote all the stuff. Um, I just wanted to stick some uh, links up here for you guys to check out. Um, I don't know, is anybody using Snaps or ever heard of Snaps before? You have? <laughs> okay, so um, Snaps is basically a platform agnostic um, distribution of packages. Um, so in this case, which is kind of weird, I don't really understand how this works, um, but it's given to Michael an honorable mention here. Uh, his blog's at the bottom, you can read all about it if you want. Um, but basically it's just another distribution of Tomcat that you can do on, on any system instead of having to worry about the platform specific thing. Um, it's sort of like just a big tarball. Um, everything is self-contained, but instead of having to go and download it from the ASF, you can say snap install. <laughs> um, and it uses uh, the system D facilities for logging and such too. So um, I don't know if you guys are interested in that or not. I didn't see anybody raising their hand, so I'm gonna skip over that. All right, discussion. And I have 15 minutes. Um, so like I said at the beginning of this talk, uh, I wanted this to be more of a discussion than just me talking about stuff. Um, so ask away, Chris. If you were to download Yeah. Plug in connectors, for instance, because most people are throwing connectors in 
mm. and their sermon posts. And, yeah. And, and that's about it. Yeah, I think maybe if we did like uh, XML includes, and I laughed when you said CompT because there is now a CompT directory in um, the Fedora distribution of Tomcat, but it's because systemd doesn't allow for um, shell expansion. <laughs> so instead of uh, sourcing Tomcat comp, um, it does some weird thing where it doesn't really have a shell and it, it cries if you try and use a variable in there. So um, the CompD directory just sources, or the wrapper script sources the whatever's on CompD and you can do shell expansion that way. Um, I haven't thought about trying to break up the server XML because I, I don't really think it's that big. And um, I mean, I mark it as a configuration file. So install time, I install it once, and every time you update, I just leave it alone because I don't want to clobber whatever you have. Um, the web XMLs of like the manager app and the host manager app, docs, all that stuff is marked as config. So. Oh, so it will not be overwritten. Mm. Hmm. Or should be done by the, by the uh, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't. I don't mean. I don't really care because I, if it's done, I may probably be helping to do it anyway. So, uh, for HCPD, it made a lot of sense. Um, I also packaged that too. <laughs> um, so it made a lot of sense to do it that way. Um, but for Tomcat, I don't know if we want to spend cycles doing that when there's other things to do, unless people think so. I mean, we can always pull the users list and ask if people would think that. That would work for them. But as far as who does it, I don't care. <laughs> Shoot. So it seems like uh, there's cases to run multiple instances of Tomcat. Mm -hmm. um, how much have you looked at um, supporting parameterized system D scripts? Um, you know how you can put a parameter in the file name mm -hmm. and then inject that into like, maybe the name of a specific file inside the system D unit file? Hey. Um, let's see. So, so we have these Tomcat name services. Um, so whenever you get ready to have another instance, you can just create a Catalina base directory and the varlib Tomcats thing. Oh, that hurt your eyes. Sorry. <laughs> um, and then it, oh, really? Oh, come on. Dang it, I always forget where the uh, service scripts live. Okay, can you see that now? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, yeah, we use the, the name variable here for named uh, Tomcat instances. So we sort of do that already, I guess. Ugh, I see a bug. <laughs> okay, uh, do you have a question? Yeah, so the reference information support, you can mention the answer. Mm, I don't know. Not sure. Have to check. Any more questions? I'm kind of curious about the uh, policy for for backports. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, I know that uh, uh, in general, Debian will only update a package if there is a security patch. Mm.
Yeah, so um, the Red Hat stance is a little different than the Fedora stance. Um, okay. So with Fedora, um, I just update at, like every month whenever we release an update, two-ish weeks later, I push another update up. Um, so I mean, nobody's cried too much about me doing that uh, unless we introduce a regression because the only, uh, the only group that depends on Tomcat that I know of at this point is the free IPA folks. They use it to host their um, IPA server stuff. Um, so sometimes whenever I bump a revision and a regression creeps in, they get really upset about it. Okay. Um, Your version numbers track the Tomcat version numbers as yeah. well? Yeah, so all of the builds are usually build one or build two um, on the RPMs, but they have the Tomcat version number. Um, let's see, oh God. So that's what it would look like. Just 8040. Right. Uh, the only time you would really have to figure it out is if you see the build uh, release number here increasing. Um, if the release number is increased, then there may be a patch that is for Tomcat, or it may just be a patch that was for the wrapper or whatever. I feel like I was going to say something else. Oh, oh uh, I was going to say real quick too. Um, so the Red Hat uh, policy for backporting is different than the Fedora policy is, um, especially for the production phase two and three products like RHEL 6. Um, so for RHEL 6, we only push out um, critical and important CVE fixes. If there's a customer that has a problem, um, like a bug, we can push that out too. Um, so it's, we don't just say we only fix stuff whenever there's a CVE. Like if you had a problem with uh, your rail distribution or if you wanted a feature that was included in a later version of Tomcat, we would like pick that in, assuming it's not super difficult, <laughs> and uh, then push out an update. Mm -hmm. um, not generally. Um, for the case that Mark was talking about earlier, um, I guess there wasn't a good uh, like commit note. <laughs> I think that was somebody's phone. Um, but yeah, so uh, there, I don't think there was a, like a commit message that linked the two together because they were separate. They, they, yeah, they were, they were separate. Hmm. But yeah, I think I don't remember if I got it before or after they did, or maybe it was because we we're on a later version. I don't know. But I didn't have a problem because I don't know. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> Yeah, so I was going to say, I, I don't. Patch would need to be ported because it wouldn't have applied to begin with. Mm. And then you have to pick up the, the reason that it applied to begin with. You need to get the thing in the day. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. Putting that in, not so, yeah, I think that um, the way that we're like releasing versions now is probably the optimal solution. Um, as long as we continue to clearly delineate, like, whenever there's a, whenever there's a bug, like, this fixes this bug, if there are any follow up commits point to the original one um, because in cases that um, the code the same code wasn't changed twice uh, the patch may be like tweaked to apply but you're like missing whatever it was uh, generally I try and include like as many patches to make it apply cleanly as I can um, oh like just do some review see if okay is this a functional change or is this like a syntax change or whatever and then if it makes sense to grab it or if Remy tells me to grab it, then I'll get those. <laughs> a lot of times he tells me not to because it's silly refactoring, which is kind of funny. But. <laughs> All right.
Any more questions? Um, no, I mean, I, I couldn't. The reason for us is like uh, the upgrades are, I mean, unless we do some kind of sanity testing, we cannot uh, push the top get upgrades like mm. if they are available. Like, this is a typical advantage of integrating uh, with Yum or any other RP management tool. Yeah. Um, I couldn't tell you who uses the RPMs or if anybody even uses them. And I think at the Red Hat level, that's not something that we can easily track because of the way that the system updates are pushed out and they're sort of locked down so that not everybody can just jump on the repository and download them. Um, so I don't really know that we could even publish that sort of stuff. Either. Yeah, so that's another um, oddity of using a distribution uh, like RHEL, for example. Fedora, because we track like the same version numbers, um, it's not really a big deal, but uh, we have a lot of customers that come in and have a list of CVs and say, my security scanner says that I'm vulnerable to these 100,000 CVEs. What's wrong? Um, and generally, we have a, a portal for CVE issues, so like if you wanted to go look it up, you could go to the customer portal, look up the CVE, there's a nice little table that says this is affected, it's fixed in this version or whatever. Um, but yeah, security scanners don't know that. They just check the version and say, well, your version's like five years old, so you should probably update. <laughs> when in reality, we've been like backporting bug fixes and security fixes in there, um, incrementing the release number that I mentioned earlier, and pushing those fixes out to customers. Um, I do not. I haven't heard of doing one. All right, I got 30 ish seconds. Anybody else have another question? Um, so I noticed when you showed those versions that you were supporting in the Fedora console, um, Apple 7 was not listed. Is that because Red Hat 7 now includes Tomcat? Um, so Tomcat's included in um, RHEL 6. Uh, the version that's included in Apple is later than the RHEL 6 version is. So RHEL 6 includes Tomcat 6 uh, based on 6.0.24, which is ungodly old. Um, but the Apple 6 distribution is wherever the latest Tomcat 7 uh, releases. Um, I guess the reason why there isn't an Apple 7 is because uh, RHEL 7 uses Tomcat 8. There isn't a release after Tomcat 8 except for 8.5 for right now. Um, so I might push... Uh, Tomcat 8.5 version into uh, Apple 7 at some point, but I don't know. Is there, um, do, do, I don't know much about Tomcat's release cycle, but do they push out new features often enough to have, for, for the uh, Red Hat policy of like trying to keep a stable version hmm. for a long time, only patching for security and stuff? Is that a problem uh, with like the rate of new features coming out in Tomcat? Uh, Generally, no, I don't think. I mean, customers just open a bug and say, we need this fixed. Um, I don't see too much traffic for Tomcat bugs on rail. Um, actually, 80% of the bugs that I've fixed for rail are ones that I filed because I found problems. Well, not necessarily so. about new features. So yeah, that, would, um, that won't make it into rail until like rail eight, um, probably. Have you seen Well, we also offer um, the JBoss Web Server product. It's a bad name, honestly. Um, at this point, it's really just Tomcat. Um, so if users wanted a later version of Tomcat than what RHEL offers, um, they could purchase separate entitlements that provide the JWS distribution. Um, right now, that includes um, Tomcat 7070 with some CVE fixes on top of it and 8036. 
So you can sort of pick which version that you want to run, um, but it's a separate, a separate thing. Um, I don't see how we could backport HTTP2 support um, to Tomcat 80, <laughs> so it, it won't be included. Um, but as far as Apple goes, um, so the extra packages repo, um, that's not a Red Hat supported um, package, so I can do whatever I want to there, just like I do for Fedora. Um, so I can just continuously push updates to Apple 6 and give customers the latest if they want it. Um, I don't think so. I mean, it's generally pretty easy for me. Um, like I said, I, I'm pretty vigilant about checking commits and making sure that stuff makes sense and that things are included. Um, I also have access to the QE test suite, so every time I backport um, something, I run the QE test suite on it. Uh, I run the unit tests. I have a Jenkins box that has three jobs for each version of or each uh, branch of Tomcat at this point, and runs it nightly uh, in my house. Uh, and that also runs OpenSSL, Tomcat native. Um, I think there might be some HTTPD tests in there. Um, so, I mean, if something's broken, I generally know about it. And as long as we continue to um, adequately comment on commits and revisions, I'm happy. <laughs> um, is there anything else that we could be doing to help out the Tomcat community? I mean, I was hoping that developing this presentation and it's super wordy like this because I intentionally wanted to be able to point somebody to it and have it decoupled from the talk and say, this is sort of how this works. And there's a, a reference material for when somebody pops up on mailing list. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, and I generally try and answer those. Um, and most of the people that come into the free note channel are asking about distribution specific stuff um, versus sending emails to the mailing list. I think I'm kind of whipping people into like, come here and ask me questions about stuff because the answers on the user list are usually, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm over time. Um, this is my information. Um, also, t uh, pound Tomcat on Freenode if anybody uses IRC. I use it for work, so I'm always online. Um, but that's it. Yeah.